Um, do I have leukemia? No, I do not. That is a very weird question. Um, oh, why? Do, okay. Someone just asked, why have I blocked reactors on Instagram lately? Um, because I am just blocking anyone with ill intent, anyone who uses my social media as a way to twist my words or monetize, um, what I'm saying. Like my Instagram Q and A's are meant to be just like fun. And I did stop doing them for like a week now because they were just getting really heavy. And I really want them to be just like light, something fun for me to do. Um, to talk to the people who enjoy me and just want to get to know me on like more of a personal level. But I just felt like it was just becoming more of a way for like reactors to monetize my words and like twist them. And I just like am not okay with anyone who's around me for ill intent. Amber begins by expressing her unease at Destiny's tendency to share personal information about her. However, she makes it clear that she did have permission to disclose certain aspects of Destiny's life. This sets the stage for the story she is about to tell. With a sense of urgency, Amber sets out to clarify that her intentions were never to disrespect Destiny's mom. She offers to divulge the complete account of what happened, acknowledging that some people may be drawn to more sensationalized versions of the story. Nevertheless, she emphasizes the significance of sharing her own side, one that may provide a different perspective and shed light on her experiences. Before delving into the incident itself, Amber provides some background information about her relationship with Mindy, Destiny's mother. She shares that she grew closer to Mindy after her breakup with Destiny. Mindy had a deep affection for Amber and even expressed a desire for her to move in. It became evident to Amber that Mindy considered her a daughter, a revelation that came to her after Mindy's untimely passing. Now, with the stage fully set, Amber goes on to describe the details of the incident. She paints a vivid picture of how Destiny's mom behaved under the influence of alcohol, highlighting the changes in her demeanor and temperament. It becomes apparent that Mindy would frequently direct her anger toward Amber, a fact that others in their proximity also noticed. The memory that stands out in Amber's mind is one where Mindy's anger turned physical. During a discussion about work options, tensions escalated and Mindy became violent towards Amber. The intensity of the moment left a lasting impact, leaving Amber to grapple with the emotional aftermath. Mindy had a deep affection for Amber and even expressed a desire for her to move in. It became evident to Amber that Mindy considered her a daughter, a revelation that came to her after Mindy's untimely passing. In sharing this story, Amber hopes to provide a comprehensive account of the incident and shed light on her own experiences. It is a tale that unravels the complexities of relationships and the challenges one can face when navigating difficult situations. Through her narrative, Amber invites readers to understand her perspective and the impact this incident had on her life. This was around maybe like the seventh week or so. Um, I was saying how like I love the job. I enjoy, I enjoy it. It's fun. Um, but I, I remember saying like YouTube is also, also important to me and it's something that I would love to do. Um, so if I, like I was weighing out my options and Mendy was in the living room and she heard me and Destiny talk, um, and she got upset with what I was saying. And she was saying how she didn't agree with me doing YouTube and didn't think that I should do it and didn't want me to stay at home and just like gain all this weight and all this stuff. And at the time, because of everything else that had happened with me and Mendy prior to this incident, I, I felt myself just like my emotions, I exploded and I just started crying. Amber had always treated her girlfriend's mother with respect and kindness. She never laid a hand on her or said anything disrespectful. However, despite her best efforts, she became a victim of both emotional and mental abuse, which left her terrified to even set foot in her girlfriend's home. It was a painful and agonizing experience for Amber, and she knew she couldn't bear it any longer. The breaking point for Amber came when the abuse escalated to physical violence. She realized that enough was enough, and she made a brave decision. 
She knew she had to move out, both for her own well-being and for the sake of her relationship with her girlfriend. Without wasting any time, Amber and her girlfriend swiftly made arrangements to leave the toxic environment behind. Despite having very little money to their names, luck was on their side. They managed to find a suitable place to live, offering them a fresh start away from the hardships they had endured. Living with her girlfriend's mother had taken a toll on Amber's mental and physical health. It was an exhausting and challenging situation, one that she was determined to escape. To facilitate their swift departure, Amber used the money she earned from her YouTube channel, wisely investing it in their new home. I want you to, to leave. She was like kicking me out. I remember she went all the way upstairs. She started grabbing my perfume and I think she threw like two down the stairs, two of my perfumes. And I started screaming because it's like I felt so much trauma. This was very much like, wow, okay, so this is how my dad used to act. And I think I was just like, it was so much. And it was all because I was just sitting there with Destiny, like expressing that, like, you know, I get to outweigh, like, do I want to do YouTube or do I want to do this job or do I want to do both? It was such a simple conversation that I was having with my partner. And there was all, already so much animosity in that home. And I was trying so hard to move and I wanted to just, I wanted to move. And long story short, um, I said something that I can't remember. If Destiny can remember, I would love for her to share that. But I think I blocked out. It felt like I did because the next thing I knew, Mendy was running down the stairs and then she started like literally punching me, slapping me. And I remember falling to the ground and she got a K cup, which was metal and it was pretty big. And she was hitting me over the head with it. Do you know how hard that is? And it's like, I'm, I just want my side to also be known. And it's just like, I know deep down that like thousands and thousands of people are only going to believe it says that ads are going to start. I don't know what that means. Sorry. Is there like ads on right now? Like I know what ads are. I'm not dumb, but I just didn't know that they did that in live streams. No, I, I am not crying because of the narc alert. 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 I am not. My stomach just growled. I haven't ate today. <laughs> what? Wait. Okay. So 10 years ago, I was 22. So where I'm at now, wait, no, 10 years ago. So from 30, I've gained like a hundred. Amberlynn bravely admitted that her partner, Destiny, had frequently requested financial assistance from her. Time and time again, Destiny would turn to Amberlynn for monetary support. However, Amberlynn soon discovered that saying no to these requests came with consequences. Whenever she refused to give Destiny money, a storm of anger would brew between them, resulting in weeks or even months of strained interactions. When they did manage to spend time together, Amberlynn found herself shouldering the financial burden. She would pay for everything, from gas to food, and even movie outings. It was as if her wallet became the sole provider for their shared experiences. Amberlynn couldn't help but feel a delicate balance teetering on a tightrope. There was a fine line between holding money over someone's head and enduring a sense of disrespect from them. In the realm of relationships, comparisons often emerge. Amberlynn took a moment to reflect on her connection with Dana, contrasting it with her experiences with Destiny. While Destiny's actions left her feeling disrespected, Dana painted a different picture. Dana treated Amberlynn with kindness and respect, never allowing any rude behavior towards her to go unchecked. Amberlynn pondered the saying, you accept the love you think you deserve in friendships and relationships. It resonated deeply within her, for she realized that her outward happiness, displayed in vlogs and videos, concealed the pain that brewed beneath the surface. Deep down, she was weighed down by the way Destiny treated her, despite the facade of cheerfulness she portrayed. In this complex tapestry of relationships, destiny and money became intertwined. Amberlynn's journey was one of self-discovery as she navigated the waters of generosity, frustration, and finding the love and respect she truly deserved. It was a path strewn with challenges and revelations, reminding her that not all destinies are created equal and that true connection and respect are essential ingredients in any meaningful relationship. She took my happiness and she just made me feel like shit. She left me like a fucking raisin. She just took it all. And, 
you know, in vlogs, I would show this like happy side of me and I would be laughing and this and that. But like deep down, like that shit was fake. <laughs> that was so fake. And it's because destiny made me feel like shit all the time. And people ask, why are you still friends with Dana? Because Dana never made me feel that way. Dana never made me feel like shit. Like destiny would be hella rude to me. And Dana would call destiny out on her shit. Like Dana was kind to me. She was there for me. And she still is. Dana is an amazing person, an amazing friend. And I will stand by that. And that just goes to show like, while Dana and destiny were together. Destiny never went on YouTube to talk bad about me. She never shared any personal information, nothing. And now that her and Dana aren't together anymore, she's coming out with all this personal stuff that is like nobody's business.